There are two transforms that are extremely important for engineering. One of them is the Laplace transform, which you've already heard of and seen in your differential equations class. And the other is the Fourier transform, which is closely related to it. Both of them are operations that take a time domain signal or equation and move them into a frequency domain using a different variable other than time, uh, usually a complex variable such as s or an imaginary frequency, omega. A lot of insight and a lot of applications actually depend on these uh, different transforms. The Laplace transform is this integral, f of t multiplied by e to the negative st, and you integrate from just before time zero to infinity. This is again taking a function of time, f of t, and transforming it into a function of a complex variable, s. Usually we use the capital letter for this, and then we also use the symbol script L of f of t to denote taking the Laplace transform. The Fourier transform has a very similar definition. It's also an integral, but it goes from negative infinity to infinity, so the starting point of the integral is somewhat different. And then instead of e to the negative st, it's confined to just e to the negative j omega t. There's also a factor of 2 pi in there, uh, but that's not of fundamental importance. So what you get out of the Fourier transform, again, is a function, again, using usually the capital letter. This time it's a function of frequency. And both of these are actually very closely related. But the difference is that uh, the Laplace transform is most interesting when you're talking about a function that undergoes some change at time 0, whereas Fourier transform is usually best for a function that goes on forever, because you're integrating forever, or a periodic function, which is going to also repeat itself forever. One way to think about what the Fourier transform does is to think about a prism, which takes a beam of light, which can contain many different frequencies. And the prism actually separates them so that the different frequencies show up in different locations. And so the prism shows you what the frequency content is of the original signal that it uh, is being given as input. So the Fourier transform also takes some signal and produces a transformation into uh, different frequencies. What are these transforms used for? The Laplace transform is most used for stability and transient analysis and uh, didn't really come into use until there was a need for feedback control systems such as uh, to amplify uh, the signal in telephone lines. So it was really in the early 1900s when the telephone system was being ex extended across the country that there was a need for amplifiers and then there was a problem discovered that these amplifiers would go unstable. So the Laplace transform was key in enabling long distance communications. That was the first uh, application and then uh, gradually it was used for many cases f where feedback control is required. Now, we just showed you what the definition of the Laplace transform is, but in truth, you rarely actually perform the integral. More often, we just have the integrals already uh, performed, and we look up the Laplace transforms in tables. The Fourier transform is uh, most used for frequency analysis, and again, for relatively steady state phenomena, as opposed to the transient anal analysis of Laplace transform. And the applications are actually too many to list, but hearing aids, uh, if you ever had an MRI or a CT scan, uh, mobile and landline uh, phone communications, this is talking about encoding as opposed to amplifying signals. If you use the JPEG and MP3 and MPEG, uh, if you've ever talked to a voice recognition system on your phone or on the telephone, these all make extensive use of the Fourier transform. The integral is actually computed in real time these days in a lot of different hardware uh, applications and in software. And in fact, a typical mobile phone will compute the Fourier transform in multiple ways in multiple places. It will compute it in hardware as part of the encoding chip that uh, is dealing with the mobile phone signals. And it will also have several apps that will use uh, different versions of the Fourier transform for different things. So what are Fourier series good for? Well, imagine you have a transfer function such as 1 over s plus 1, 
and you actually want to apply some strange functions such as this as the input. Well, we already know what the steady state output is for a sinusoidal input. We know that it's going to be a sinusoid at the same frequency, but with a magnitude and a phase that are to be determined from our transfer function. But if our input is just a sum of sinusoids at different frequencies, then we can use, just use this idea over and over with superposition. So that means that our y of t can be thought of as a sum of a bunch of different sinusoids at a bunch of different frequencies, each with a magnitude and a phase that we can get from our transfer function. Another property of Fourier transforms is that often, if you have a periodic signal, you only need a fairly small number of sinusoids to uh, re reproduce f of t, or at least approximate it uh, reasonably well. Here's an example of a uh, breaking a signal. Here we have a square wave, which is periodic. Uh, we can rewrite this as a bunch of sinusoids, where the first sinusoid is going to be uh, just at the same frequency as the square wave and not look very much like the square wave. But let's say we add another sinusoid at twice the frequency, then the sum of those two can actually be much closer to approximating our square wave. If we add a third frequency, it gets even closer, and similarly with a fourth frequency. So you actually need an infinite number of such frequencies to reproduce the square wave exactly, but with a relatively small number of sinusoids at, a multi uh, at multiples of the square wave's frequency, you can actually get a very good approximation to that signal, and then you can use everything that we found out about frequency response to predict the behavior of the system. So why are Fourier series helpful? Frequency response tells us how a system will behave for a sinusoidal input. Fourier series tells us how any periodic input is just a bunch of sinusoids at different frequencies. So a frequency response is good not only for pure sinusoids, but for any other input, particularly periodic inputs. So here's a summary of what we've talked about. The Laplace transform is uh, one kind of transform that's particularly useful for feedback control and stability analysis, and we typically use tables to look up the uh, transforms. The Fourier transform is useful for frequency analysis, and using the Fourier series, we know how to break a signal into the sum of a bunch of different sinusoids, where the different frequencies are integer multiples of the signal's base frequency, such as the square wave's frequency.